Not all flowers are as common as roses and daisies. Some are so rare that if you see them, you better take a photo for your Instagram, or whatever photo sharing app the kids use these days. These are 20 plants that are born only once in a thousand years. Number 20. Veselka Mushroom well, here we are with a whole lot of nonsense about a mushroom which seems to have been the victim of a terrible Google Translate malfunction, so bear with me while I try and salvage some sense from this insanity. Okay, so what we have here is a very rude looking mushroom indeed. There are no two ways about it, this mushroom looks exactly like a willy. You know it, I know it, we shouldn't pretend. Just go on and laugh out loud, be real immature about it, because stuff that looks like stiffies is inherently funny. Aside from all that particular hilarity, there's not much that's known about these fungi. They appear to be native to Russia and are found in deciduous forests and occasionally in areas of mixed woodlands. When they're fully grown, these mushrooms may reach a sizable 10 inches. And to add to that general ridiculousness of the thing, it's also taken as a supplement to enhance certain <laughs> masculine body parts because of course it is before we go on like this video smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping Now it's time for the sweet topic. Some guy is insisting that the pea shooters creature from the video game Plants vs. Zombies is actually real, and the photo on the right is his so-called evidence. Now it doesn't actually shoot peas, and the bits that looks like eyes don't actually work like eyes, but it sure looks identical to the enemy from the game. Is it a crazy coincidence, or did the developers base it on this real plant? As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below using the hashtag sweet topic. Number 19. Corpse Flower Well, doesn't this one sound absolutely delightful? What a glorious name, so evocative. I wonder just what butaceous wonders are within. The dead horse arum lily is an ornamental plant that comes from the islands of Sardinia, Corsica, and the Balearics, and it would have to be ornamental because it has a terrible pong that is enough to put you right off of eating your tea. These stinky old dead horse arum lilies are so called on the account of the pungent perfume of rotting meat that emanates from its flowers. This is designed to attract blowflies that are attracted to the stink of carrion as they act as the main pollinators for these flowers. It is gross but it's also effective, and the other thing that this plant seems to be able to do is alter its own temperature. Yes, it's able to raise its own temperature through a process called thermogenesis. This is also another way that it can lure flies into its insides to get to the pollen and then go and spread it all around. Number 18. Tahina Palm this is a species of giant palm tree that's only found in one very specific area of Madagascar. That's the case for many things in Madagascar in general, though. This island is a haven for many types of animals and plants which cannot be found anywhere else on Earth. It's a special place that needs to be appreciated and protected for its totally unique stuff. The Tahina palm was only officially discovered in 2007. It's a gigantic tree that can grow up to 59 feet tall and has leaves that can be as big as 16 feet across. It will live for as long as 50 years and then in a final flourish will produce an enormous inflorescence which means that it'll make a huge flowery display and then it will dramatically die. All very operatic and ever so slightly magical. It's believed that there are actually fewer than 100 living specimens of this unique species of palm, and that's why it's been listed as critically endangered on the International Union for Conservation of Nature list. There are other varieties of the genus Tahina to be found elsewhere in the world, but there are no other known places where this particular species is growing. It's just here in this one spot doing all that dramatic stuff, and nobody even noticed until really recently. Number 17. World's Loneliest Tree 
In a strange turn of events, there is one tree all by itself in this sub-Antarctic island in New Zealand, and it should never have been there in the first place. This lone tree sits all by itself in the windswept landscapes of Campbell Island in New Zealand. It is a Sitka spruce, a tree which is native to the northern hemisphere and has had no business whatsoever being down here at the very bottom of New Zealand. In fact, the closest tree to this one anywhere nearby is over 170 miles away to the northeast in the the Auckland Islands. That's right, there are no other trees to be found anywhere. So how does a sad and lonely tree wind up all by itself here on this cold and windy island? Well, according to historical records, the tree was planted here at about the turn of the 20th century by a man named Lord Ranfurly. He was, at the time, the governor of New Zealand, and it stands there to this day as a sad reminder of how much impact that human behavior can have on the natural landscape and the indefinite effect that these actions can have have on a delicately balanced ecosystem. Number 16. Attenborough's Pitcher Plant According to Darwin, millions of years ago, a bunch of plants went through a series of changes and adaptations that meant that they evolved the ability to eat meat. It sounds wild, but that's what carnivorous plants do. Plants like the Venus flytrap are infamous for this sort of bloodthirsty behavior, and those kinds are especially interested in eating small insects. There are other kinds of carnivorous plants with much more surprising tastes. These are nepenthes, a type of tropical pitcher plant, and are also known as pitcher plants on the account of their shape, which is said to resemble a pitcher or a jug of sorts. These plants often have found themselves growing in nutrient-deficient soils and have therefore developed adaptations to help them survive these difficult conditions. They have developed a very tricky means which allows them to coax, capture, and ingest insects and some other kinds of prey as well. These unusual diets give the plants the phosphorus and nitrogen that they need to grow and sustain themselves, and this particular nepenthe is named for David Attenborough, the beloved English naturalist and celebrated broadcaster who is a keen enthusiast of all things in the natural world. Number 15. Rothschild's Slipper Orchid these weird flying alien-looking things are plants that officially go by the name of Rothschild's Slipper Orchid or the Gold of Kinabalu Orchid. They're unique even within their own group of flowers, and these flowers are large clear-leafed orchids that will bloom with tall flowers that can grow up to be about six at a time. The petals are displayed almost perfectly horizontally, which is more or less unique to this species of orchid, and they flower primarily between April and May. This orchid can be found in the rainforests of northern Borneo around the Mount Kinabalu area. They grow at elevations of between 500 and 1200 meters above sea level and are particularly attractive to parasitic flies, which are drawn to the spots of the petals as they appear to be like groups of aphids. The flies then brush against the flower stigma and will pollinate the flower, and it's all very clever stuff. Number 14. Ascension Island Parsley Fern one of the lingering troubles with colonialism, as well as all the obvious thievery, enslavement, and general corruption involved, of course, is the total trampling of the delicately balanced ecosystems in places that were invaded and taken over by imperial powers. That is in evidence in many places, but here on Ascension Island in the South Atlantic Ocean, the native species of plants and wildlife in general have suffered enormous losses, some of which have been completely obliterated into extinction because because of the introduction of non-native species that have proven to be utterly invasive and wreck the existing natural order of things. Animals like rabbits, donkeys, sheep, and rats have all played a huge part in trashing the native habitat of many species of plants and animals as well as invasive plant species that have bullied their way through the environment, eclipsing everything else. The Ascension Island Parsley Fern is one species that's extremely important to the natural history of the place. It was long believed to have been completely extinct until a handful of fragile plants were discovered on the island in 2010. It's now considered critically endangered, but has shown that sometimes, even when it seems as though all hope is lost for a native species, they can sometimes just squeak through. Number 13. Coral Tree 
The coral bean tree is actually native to the high forests and river basins of many parts of South America. It's now also naturalized in places within Central America as well and also in parts of the Caribbean. This tree is generally used in many practical ways. It makes great living hedges and fences and is commonly used as a source of reliable shade in the hot and sunny environments in which it may be found. The coral bean is also widely utilized for mulching and for the support of vines and alley crop. The wood of this tree is very light and rather porous, so it's not really good as a burning fuel but may be effective in the building of canoes and also for carving. The tree itself also produces attractive red-orange flowers, which makes it pleasing for ornamental use, but these are also apparently edible in small quantities and are often added to salads. But for Pete's sake, don't just start going around munching on any old flowers you find. That could prove to be very deadly indeed. Number 12. The Baseball Plant These are some strange looking plants, but again, they are a kind of succulent, and this time they've cleverly disguised themselves as baseballs. Well, sort of anyways. These are a large group of woody and succulent plants that grow into a ball shape that is well adapted to very dry and hot climate. These are amongst the plants that are oh so popular with all the plant-loving people these days, and for good measure and reason. They require very little maintenance and are not much thirsty at all. There are other cactusy sorts of plants in this group, but the baseball one is the most interesting due to its unique shape. It was first documented back in 1897, but in the way that often happens when something new and exciting comes to the attention of people, it became endangered by 1915 because it was so very popular. There were new restrictions that were put in place for the harvesting of these plants, along with the use of the seeds to grow them even even more. But nowadays they're easy to find in garden centers, so that's a relief, because growing one from a seed could take you a while. Number 11. Voodoo Lily Another extremely stinky plant, the voodoo lily is one of those arums that gives off a foul stench of death, despite looking like a pretty flower the whole time. These are a very dramatic sort of plant, and they not only have this extraordinary architectural quality, but they're also really cool and have a spooky color. And if you're into goth gardening, then these are going to be right up your alley. They are tall and weird looking and have very dark purple flowers, and when you add in their gross dead body stink, well, then you've got all the spookiest garden you could ever imagine, even if nobody will go out there because it smells like corpses. The stinkiness is actually a part of how these flowers encourage pollinating insects to come and do their thing. It's a strange thing to wear the aroma of death in order to entice anything, but apparently there are a bunch of flies that find this rotting flesh fragrance utterly irresistible. It does take all sorts now, doesn't it? Number 10. Western Underground Orchid So here's a really weird plant. This is the Western Underground Orchid, and it's native to Australia, like many unusual things. However, this is a plant unlike many that you may have ever seen before. This bizarre little parasitic orchid is very rare, but even if it were common, you wouldn't see these all over the place as they're actually f a flower that's underground. Weird, isn't it? But there are actually only six known populations of this orchid in the region of Western Australia, and that means that there are fewer than 50 mature plants in existence anywhere. So how does the thing actually work? Well, rather than using photosynthesis to get its energy, this plant is a parasite that gets its energy from using a fungus to suck the stuff it needs out of the broom honey myrtle. This is seemingly the only plant that the western underground orchid likes as these are the only locations in which it's been found. However, this very specific requirement is likely a reason that these plants are so rare and it could ultimately prove the death of them. These orchids are considered to be critically endangered. Number 9. Vinda cycad. This is a species of plant that's native to the area that's around the Limpopo province in South Africa. The Vinda cycad can be found on surfaces facing southeast at the edge of the Kruger National Park at altitudes of between 800 and 1,000 meters above sea level. These plants, in my opinion anyway, are not exactly the most thrilling or fascinating of all the plants out there. 
In fact, I have no real idea exactly how they wound up here on this list. So if you have any additional information about them and what exactly makes them so very fascinating, then go ahead and feel free to enlighten the heck out of me in the comment section down below. Otherwise, all I can tell you is that these plants grow to be a substantial 13 feet tall with a stem that has a diameter of about 16 inches. The thrills just never cease. Number eight, elephant foot yam. So this is the main component of something called an elephant foot curry. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty relieved that it's a plant-based dish and not what it sounded like. I wouldn't want to imagine all those elephants out there trying to hop around on three feet. Anyways, this is just a big fat tuber plant like any other sort of yam, and it's a vegetable that's widely used in plenty of local dishes in the regions where it can be found growing native. These places include Africa, South Asia, Southeast Asia, and the tropical Pacific Islands. As well as growing naturally in these areas, the plant is also cultivated as a cash crop. It's a weird looking plant though, and has strange flowers that consist of a big purple shoot, which gives off a really smelly odor that's attractive to pollinating insects, and it's a long and complicated process to get everything fertilized. These things sometimes are you know. But then, once that has all been achieved, the flowers start to produce fruits, and these are also pretty wild looking and, if nothing, not a little suggestive in their presentation. So the edible part of the plant is the tuber, and the rest is really just showing off. Number 7. Vegetable Sheep so here is a plant that is actually neither a vegetable nor a sheep, although it does bear more of a passing resemblance to the latter, especially if you're a bit short-sighted and it's an especially large specimen. This is the so-called vegetable sheep, which is a plant that can be found in the coldest, rockiest parts of New Zealand. This shrub from a distance looks like a sheep, and from close up it looks more like a rock. And then upon closer inspection, it becomes evident that it is in fact a plant of sorts. They're made up of loads of teeny weeny leaves that are covered with hairs that are packed together extremely tightly, creating that dense woolly appearance. These serve as an important purpose. The tight packing of the leaves keeps the interior of the shrub nice and snug, and the cold harsh winds that blow through this region would easily dry out the insides of the plant if it were not for this clever adaptation. Inside, there's a warm and cozy environment to keep all the functions happening so that the plant stays thriving even in the roughest of weather conditions. Number six, tropical pitcher plants. Now we've already had a look at a tropical pitcher plant. You remember there was one named after David Attenborough. Anyways, here we are again, as is often the case in our lists, I must say. So what more could be said about these plants? Well, to reiterate what we've already established, tropical pitcher plants are carnivorous species of plants that are specially designed to trap and digest insects for their energy, rather than relying on photosynthesis. Some of these plants get most of their nutrients through this technique, whereas others have it as a kind of additional useful feature. This is because these plants have adapted to grow in places where the soil may be of poor quality and does not support their growth entirely without supplements. In this case, those are unlucky creatures that are lured inside the pretty flower and then they feed the plant with nutrients that it cannot find in the environment otherwise. Number 5. Poke Me Boy Tree now, apart from having a truly awesome name, what else could we really say about the Poke Me Boy tree? Well, to be honest, the name is probably the best and perhaps most interesting thing about it, to be fair. This plant is indigenous to Anagata Island in the British Virgin Islands in the Caribbean. In fact, it's only found in this region of the world. The preferred climate for the Poke Me Boy is subtropical or even a dry tropical forest. But like with so many other things, human behavior has impacted the survival of this plant, and it's now considered critically endangered on the account of all the expansion into its territory that people have done. That along with livestock grazing and the usual invasive species could actually force this plant rapidly towards extinction. These trees are commonly known as thorn trees, or sometimes something I'm not about to try to pronounce, but this species can be differentiated from others by its fancy flowers and its spiny stipules. These sorts of trees have been used medicinally since the times of the ancient Greeks and Romans. Number four, bladder wart. 
Bladderwort is a carnivorous plant. There are actually 220 different species of bladderwort out there, and these things can be found in many places and are widely distributed across the waters of northern temperate regions of the planet. Like other carnivorous plants, these bladderworts can live in places where there are limited nutrients as they're able to supplement their nutritional requirements by digesting many different sorts of small insects, larvae, water fleas, and aquatic worms. Mmm, delicious. These plants have many small hollow sacs of air that they use to keep themselves afloat in the water, and these sacs are also part of the plant that is used to capture insects and worms when they are also digested by the plant in these same sacs. They have a sort of trapdoor system which can be triggered by a small insect brushing against its bristles. The trap will be opened suddenly and water will flow in, which sucks the prey in with it. The trap then closes and the creature is digested by the plant. That all happens in a split second, and then a mere 15 minutes later, the trap will be reset for its next victim. Bladderwort plants may be found in streams, lakes, and other watery soils around the world, and some of the species are actually invasive, having taken up residence in places where they have no business being. These plants do not put down roots, but rather they have a horizontal floating system that holds the plant's leaves and bladders, and when they reach maturity, the plant will then produce flowers. Number 3 monkey tail cactus. Growing succulents and cacti and all manner of plants is all the rage these days, mostly because we're all living in dingy, tiny rented apartments, and one of the few ways that we can improve our miserable surroundings and add a little bit of hope to our crushed lives is to add a few plants. Gardening for optimists, after all. You have to trust in tomorrow when you plant a seed, you know? Anyways, this is one of the weirdly popular sorts of plants that people have been getting into growing and keeping in their homes, although frankly I find this one to be just a little more than creepy in its appearance. The monkey tail cactus is named, presumably on the account of its resemblance to a furry long monkey's tail. That in and of itself is quite enough to put me off of growing anything of the sort. A heap of monkey tails is not an aesthetic which really does it for me. But hey, you do you, and if you happen to like that sort of thing, you'll find no judgment here. In fact, I'm probably just jealous of your green fingers, since I barely have to glance in the direction of a plant and it'll simply keel over and die. So there you go, the monkey tail cactus is a poisonous plant that's pretty fast growing and can grow up to 4 inches a month during the summertime, which I think makes it seem a bit creepier to be honest. Ugh, just looking at all those tails dangling there like that, tell me that isn't gross to you. Go on and get involved in the comments section down below and be sure to tell me how wrong I am and what a wally I really am. I know you'll want to. Number 2. Lithops, Living Stones no, these are not rocks, even though they have every appearance of being just that. They are, in fact, living plants. Lithops are a type of succulent that is incredibly slow growing. They'll grow for years upon years and still barely poke out an inch above the ground. They originated in South Africa, where the local names for them meant cattle hoof and sheep's hoof, which seems to be a bit more descriptive than the stone names that have been granted. These plants appear in the way they do because they've adapted to be camouflaged in their natural environments in much the same way that animals have done as well. These small succulents can be found in Namibia and South Africa in abundance and in both these native places. They've so adapted very well that they are very difficult to actually spot on the ground at all. Both of the main places that these plants are found are extremely dry and have an average annual rainfall of less than 20 inches, and some areas have as little as 4 inches per year. So given the limited supply of water and especially long dry seasons, these little plants are able to get the most out of the moisture that they need from the mist and the fog. Number 1. Jellyfish Tree Unique to Seychelles, the jellyfish tree is bound up in a lot of stories and history about the islands. This tree was named Medusa Gyne after the mythical figure in Greek mythology Medusa, with all the snakes for hair. But the tree has since become more popularly known as the jellyfish tree for having fruit that's shaped like these creatures. 
There's not a whole lot to say about the jellyfish tree. These things can reach around 49 feet tall and have dense foliage, jellyfish-shaped fruits, and dark bark, which is notable for its distinctive fissures. It can withstand drought and has many features more often associated with plants in arid conditions, despite the fact that the Seychelles are rather moist. This plant has been believed to have actually gone extinct until a few would be discovered to have survived back in the 1970s, and they are now still critically endangered, and it's believed that there may be fewer than 100 mature jellyfish trees left out there. Well, there you have it. I know we didn't get off to the best of beginnings, what with all the plants being born nonsense, but I hope that some of them were at least vaguely interesting. I know that there are likely to be many of you who are extremely knowledgeable about plants, so go ahead and be sure to correct all the massive stinking errors that I'm bound to have made. That's what the internet is all about. Which of these plants was most interesting to you, and did any of them give you the proper creeps? As always, let me know all of your thoughts about this, or, you know, whatever you like in the comment section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time. I love you.